Hey guys, Furum here, and today I'm going to be testing the Lamborghini Diablo GT at Golden Max in multiplayer in Asphalt 9. Please consider subscribing if you have not already, and be sure to check out my Furum Clips channel, Furum TV channel, and Purple Team Discord. Links to all those will be down in the description, and I hope you enjoy the video. Before we get too far into things, I'd just like to say that I have been getting over a cold this past week, which is why I haven't been uploading any videos, and why my voice may sound a little bit different in this one. I also most likely will not be streaming tomorrow, as I want to give my voice time to rest, because the past few times I have had a cold, and you know, I've had the whole deal with sore throat and coughing and everything, when I've overexerted my voice, I have many times come down with a case of laryngitis, um, which may or may not necessarily be related to that, but it just seems like a pattern that's happened in the past. So in any case, yes, most likely will not be a stream tomorrow, but I did want to make this video for you guys to kind of kick off the Lamborghini season. Now, why am I testing this car first? Well, I actually tested this car a few weeks back in the Torino season, which is actually where I've recorded these races, it's kind of coincidental, um, actually, that this car came right back, like in the very next season, in the Lamborghini season. So here you go. This one was recorded the furthest back, so it's the first one you get. Next one will probably be the Revuelto, followed by the Reventon. Um, the Diablo and the Reventon are two Lamborghinis that I honestly forgot were in the game. They were added less than a year ago in the Lamborghini update to the game, um, where the Countach LPI was added, along with the GT, the Reventon, and some other Lamborghinis like the Mira and the Sesto Elemento. But these two in particular, I feel like, did not get a lot of press, as you might say. I don't remember hearing anybody really talk about these cars. Um, I haven't seen any comparisons with this car and other ones on YouTube, which I typically do see. And that strikes me as a little bit strange, because this car is toward the top of its class in Class C. It's not a king as far as I'm aware. I'm sure we would have seen more buzz about it and see it on the leaderboards if it was so. But it's still fairly high in its class and pretty good, I would say. Um, it reminds me a lot of the Venser and the Aranera in terms of its overall performance. It's kind of, in my opinion, almost like a cross between the two. Like, it is not quite as stiff feeling as the Aranera, but it definitely drifts worse than the Venser, so I would kind of call it sort of a combination of the two. Although given that his top speed and acceleration are almost identical to those of the Vencers, that's the one I would mostly compare it to. And I think this is the reason why it's not a king, because the Venser loses to the Aranera on almost everything due to the Aranera's higher acceleration and top speed than the Venser. And even though the Aranera sort of drifts worse, the fact that this car drifts worse than the Venser, and the Venser is already worse than the Aranera, means that, yeah, this car isn't going to beat the Aranera on pretty much anything, I would imagine. And even the good Nitro doesn't really make up for that, because the thing is, Good Nitro, while it's great for making a car feel good and for multiplayer, if you're in a D or C class car, I mean, gosh, even B class, I would say that having a really good Nitro efficiency is not as important, simply because you don't have as high of a top speed to get to. Your Shockwave doesn't need to last as long, your other Nitros don't need to last as long in order to get to your top speed, if your acceleration is at least decent. So yeah, that's what I would say in these lower classes, the nitro efficiency of cars maybe doesn't make quite as big of a difference as it does in some of the upper classes. At least that's been my experience. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. So we've recently had a few new events start. We've of course had the Jaguar XJR special event, um, which kind of interestingly was accompanied by a, I think it's a bug that Gameloft just didn't fix, at least in several hours because it happened at the time I was asleep. So even though the SE for the Jaguar XJR, that new insanely fast A-class car, is is legend pass locked like you can't get by i think uh, maybe the third or fourth day without having the kepler the legend pass car of the update um which i also do plan to test by the way they made it available for you to be able to buy packs for the car and key packs for the car at the very beginning of the event which i don't think was intended but they kept it so who knows at this point 
Now, unfortunately for my case, I thought, <laughs> well, this is my chance. Maybe I can get a quote unquote legend pass car before it goes away. Maybe I can try my luck in these key packs and get lucky like I did with the Tuatar. Well, it turns out that the Tuatar is the only key car that I've ever gotten lucky on, and maybe the Yesco as well, and I used up all my luck on those because I spent somewhere around 11 to 12,000 tokens, I know, on the key packs for that car. And I got a decent number of blueprints for it, but no key, unfortunately. <laughs> um, some people, the thing is, these, these key packs, they're so random that you get people who get them in two or 3,000 tokens. I've seen some of those on Discord. I know people who have gotten the car in two or 3,000 tokens. I know somebody else who it took him or he spent 34,000 tokens on it and still did not get the car. And I mean, it feels unfair in, in a sense, obviously, because some people are getting the car way easier than others. At the same time, we also have to understand it's, it's luck based, which obviously is not a fun mechanic, never has been. So yeah, still kind of frustrating. but. I'm okay with it in the end, I gave it a shot, and I feel like it was a decently worthwhile risk to take, given that number one, those could be taken away at any time, and it's literally an A-class king on most tracks that I would be missing out on the chance for, and I think honestly, if I hadn't have gone for it, I would have regretted it more than I am frustrated now after having not gotten it, because it was just such a good and really too good of an opportunity to pass up my opinion. Now, that leads us to the point, do I think you guys should go for it? Well, given my experience and given the experience of a lot of other people, this entirely depends on your risk tolerance because you could very well get the key in like 2,000 tokens, but it's a lot more likely that you spend 10, 20,000, I would say, and you don't get it. But then again, you might. So honestly, I would just say, uh, you know, do you have anything else that you know for a fact is coming that you will want to be spending your tokens on? Then don't spend on this one. But if you really need a good high-end A-class car and you have a good amount of tokens, don't really know what to spend them on, there's a lot worse things you could spend them on, and I certainly wouldn't fault anyone for trying to get this car. We've also got the new Fringe Evento Grand Prix, which I attempted to get th tier three or four in, like I did with the AMG GT and was able to win it that way. Unfortunately, I got pushed into tier one. I think I may have forgotten to wreck once in my qualifying rounds. Oh well, probably won't be getting that car. But anyways, now it's time for my general review of the Diablo GT. It's a good, fairly high-end C-Class car, but not a king. So if you already have the Aranera or other kings of C-Class, class max, I wouldn't really recommend spending many tokens on this one. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you've enjoyed and consider subscribing for more Asphalt, Forza, Minecraft, and other games content. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.